Coming up on Tin Man Saws, we have one clone saw. Did we clone our clone saw? Friends, I have to jump in here. A friend of the channel that wants to remain unnamed, <laughs> put this in a box. This is a brand new, from what I can tell, never run 288 Farmer Tech kit. Now we have two of them to play with or blow up or figure things out about them. Isn't that cool? So anyways, I wanted to say thank you to the unnamed friend of the channel that dropped this in the mailbox and sent it our way. Pretty cool, isn't it? Clone of my clone saw. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled program. Later. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for stopping by and joining me for another video. Appreciate everybody that hangs out here. As you guys know, those of you who have been around and welcome to the newcomers, I just built this still 038 Magnum. Okay, 038 Magnum on the channel. It is ported, but that is of no that is of no consequence to today's video. Now, do you guys have an 038 or a still that is hard starting? These 038s are notorious for starting problems. Cold, warm, they'll start one pull usually. I had one of these years ago. It was a hard, hard starter. Um, I would pull on that thing sometimes for five, 10 minutes and it would not start. Now, at that point, I didn't know what I do now. Now I know how to fix the problem. So if you have a still 038 or a still, an older still, and I'll show you how to tell if this is your problem or not, but if you have an 038, especially any of them, all the way from the regular 038 AV all the way up to the Magnum, you're going to want to watch this video if your saw doesn't start right away. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you guys first run of this saw. It was hard to start. I pulled on this thing and pulled on it and pulled on it and pulled on it and pulled on it. It did not start, friends. So right there, and I mentioned in the video that I probably have an issue, even from a brand new build. Um, I think I pulled on this thing 10, 12, 15 times before it even fired. So here's a clip of that. Watch and listen and notice the saw doesn't even fire. Now, everything's dry, so it might take 10, 12 pulls to start. Interesting. Now friends, at this point, I was getting a little sad. Maybe this saw won't start. But then I realized something going through the footage. I was wearing my Poland hat, not my still hat. That's probably the problem. Back to the video. Okay, so those first three clips, that's the first time I started this saw. That was, what, about 20 pulls? Way too many. I went through the process because often, uh, here's the thing, I make these videos to help you guys out there and entertain you and, you know, give you guys something to do when you're hanging out in the house. Often I know that there's a problem, but I'll keep going and ride it right through to show you guys. If I just went in and went, oh, it needs a little this or that, you guys aren't going to learn anything, right? That was 20 pulls until it started. Once it started, it was fine. So right there, what does that tell you as a saw builder or even a saw user? You're lean, okay? You're lean on either the low jet or you have a choke issue, okay? So I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to bring you guys in and show you how to fix that. We're in close here now. High, low, okay? Your high jet is 99% of the time. It's rare it's ever backwards. It probably is never backwards. Your high jet is always the farthest one from the cylinder, okay? So here's your high jet, here's your low jet, okay? So what I did is I took my low jet, okay, and I gave it about another quarter turn, which is a lot, see, quarter turn, and then tried to start it again. But here's the thing, friends, once I have this saw running, that's it. I can't start it again as a cold start. I got to let it cool down. So what I did was I let it cool down with the extra quarter turn of low jet and went to start it the next day. Here's the video of me pulling this thing over the next day and starting it. Now, once again, friends, I am weirded out. 
Notice in this clip coming up, still hat. Count the poles. Notice, five poles with the still hat on. Coincidence or actually the problem? Wrong headwear. You be the judge. You guys ready? Interesting. So that's full choke. So that clip there was the next day, day two. I, I idled and ran this thing for a bit because sometimes a new build, sometimes the rings don't seat and you get a lot of blow by and that will affect your, your crankcase pressures and, and whether you're getting vacuumed to your carburetor through your pulse line or your pulse circuit. Your pulse circuit, as the piston goes up and down, it pushes and pulls, okay? And it makes the inside of the carburetor, there's a diaphragm in there, it goes squirt, 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 and that's what gives you fuel. Sometimes that's the problem. Now in this case, I didn't think that's what that was, but I let this thing idle, let it run a bit. Now, the video you just saw, the clip, was the next day. I gave this thing another quarter turn. The low jet was at about one and three quarters turns there. That is way too rich for most low jets. This one here, I want it to run between one and one and a half turns, okay? But it started four turns, but if you notice, if you listen to it, it started up and then it was boggy. It had not enough fuel right away, which tells me, again, I am lean on the low jet or on the choke circuit, okay? So right there, this saw was boggy because it didn't have enough fuel. Once I fired it up again, notice I let it run on choke and then high idle, and then when I turned that stuff off, it sat there and idled. It needed a moment to catch up. So again, as a mechanic, what does that tell you? It tells you the saw's lean. So what can we do? Yeah, we can, we can put our screwdriver and give it another quarter turn, and it'll probably start then, but now we've created a new problem. The saw won't idle because it's getting too much fuel. It's what we call loading up, right? It's loading up. So anyways, so that's where we were at. Now, here's the third day. The second day, I was feeling positive, so I thought, ah, it's a little rich on the low jet, but it is starting. The, set, the third time I went to start this, this is day three, watch here. It's right back to where it was, it's horrible. Now once again, pay attention to the hat. This is day three, count how many times I pull it over and notice I am not wearing the steel hat. Could it be something to do with the hat? I'm just saying, I read it on the internet that sometimes the hat makes the saw. You guys be the judge. <laughs> yeah. So what I did yesterday, friends, I gave it about a half a turn more low jet, and I gave it some more idle. Let's see if this thing starts now. If it doesn't, we'll have to try again tomorrow. I want to get a good baseline on this saw. Okay, and that clip there, I didn't even keep going till it fired. You guys saw it was eight pulls till it even flashed or fired. It still didn't start though. So I knew I had a problem. It was funny. I was laughing, reading the comments. Everybody was like, I know what it is. Fuel line, fuel filter, um, more low jet, uh, air leak at the carburetor. Um, what else did somebody say? It was all kinds of, there was one man that got it right. Now he's cheating because of who he is, but Donnie Walker jumped into the comments and he said, in typical Donnie Walker style, he's like, those are famous for warped or choke problems. Now, friends, I knew that's what it was. I was hoping somebody would guess. Donnie Walker, of course, came to the rescue. Friends, if you haven't been over, go to Donnie Walker's channel. Um, he's a hardworking Canadian boy. Uh, he is a saw builder, saw porter. He does it full time. He's not, he's not like me. I just, you know, I putter in my shop. Um, that man knows so much about saws and wrenching. If you're if you're interested in saws, watching his videos, picking up on the little tips and tricks he gives, it's helped me tremendously. So Donnie, you were correct. Okay, friends, what we have wrong with this saw is a choke issue. Okay, uh, let's take it apart and and I'll show you how to diagnose a bad choke on one of these and how to fix it. It'll cost you nothing but ten minutes of your time. 
Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix this. Uh, this applies to all O3H. These things are notorious for being hard to start. There are other still models that have the choke flap in the air filter. If you know which models, uh, if you could post a comment below uh, to help other people out with their stills. Uh, I believe the O26 has this too, but don't quote me on that. Okay, pull your air filter cover off. Now, here's your air filter. Now you guys are gonna see, I'm gonna pull the air filter right off because you guys probably won't be able to see um, what I'm what I'm showing. It's too tight in there. But I wanna show you how this, this works. Okay, here's your air filter right here. And again, these fall off quite a bit. Especially when you have the choke engaged. Okay, so it is a two-piece air filter. You can take it apart. Now, look at this setup. This is actually your choke. It is not part of the carburetor like it is in a normal carb setup. Okay, now when you guys put the choke on on your saw, right here, okay, see this tab on this side? That pushes up. That pushes up on here okay it'll be this way okay it's facing this way you'll see this little tab protrude out what that's doing is it's pushing this against the front okay this is the carburetor is here there's your air filter it's pushing that against this against there creating a choke right you're not getting any air it's just flooding the carburetor with fuel now what happens to these, and Donnie Walker hit the nail on the head, because um, he's Donnie Walker. If any of you guys out there know Donnie Walker, you know what I'm talking about. The guy's a wealth of knowledge. So all I did here was, I took one of these, okay, a raker file. And all I did was, and I'll show you guys, There's now there is another issue with these saws, and I'm going to talk about that when we're done describing how to fix this issue now there's a little spring in here you guys see the spring there that comes unhooked from this so you basically just pull this out and it unhooks inside there and to there okay um, and that's it take your file and run it across the flat of this okay go like this okay now I took mine and put it on a flat surface a piece of granite piece of glass and I could see it was it was warped back from all the years of use it was pushed back it was only touching here so what i did was i filed this part put it back on the glass and just kept filing it and then went across and dressed the whole face now now when you push the choke in it's actually sealing against there okay and again you can take these apart to clean them they do come in half seas like that so there you go and again when you push the choke in it goes like this Okay, look inside here. There's your choke. So again, look inside and see, I had spaces in there, you could see right through it, it wasn't sealing, and that's why this saw wouldn't start. Now, problem number two that these saws have is they get really rich when they're running. And that is this spring wears out. The aftermarket ones have a really weak spring. So if you're gonna buy an aftermarket air filter, that can be fine, but make sure you put this spring in your aftermarket air filter because what ends up happening is it gets too loose and under vacuum when this saw is, you know, doing 10,000 RPM, it'll pull that closed and you'll end up with a rich running problem, okay? So make sure that that spring holds this tightly into the body, okay? Just like that. It should smack shut, okay? And that's it. You do that to your 038 Magnum or 038 or any other still. And I'm sure people out there will post in the comments because there's so many good people on this channel. Okay, I'm sure uh, there's other models with this, but if you have an 038 especially, and it doesn't start one pull, I guarantee 90% of the time, if it's not, if it's a saw that's in good condition, meaning it doesn't need a carb kit or any other maintenance, if it's just a regular running saw and suddenly it doesn't want to start, it's that, okay? Now, let's give this thing a fire. I have not run this thing yet today. I'm going to show you guys. Will it start? I hope it does, or I'll look pretty silly, won't I?
Okay, and if you go through those steps, here you go, friends. This is a cold motor. It is 88 degrees. The tailgate is 105. So here you guys go. Hey, you guys see that? 88 degrees. The tailgate is 105, 102. Hope you guys can see that. 102, okay? This is a stone cold motor. I have not fired this. Now I hope it starts first, okay? Full choke, ready? This is the first start of the day. I'll bring you guys a little bit back here so you can see. This is the first start of the day, okay? Uh, every saw I build, four poles. If it doesn't start in four poles, I'm not a happy camper. From cold, hot, I want one, maximum two poles. Two poles is a really warmed up saw. One pole is a regular work build, okay? Ready? Well, it's it started there. One pole. Is that funny? Okay, now it's considered warm. time oh, this thing friends these still especially these old ones um they mean business this thing's got huge compression and uh it's got a crisp ignition timing on it look it, it just it just snapped that out of my hands this is gonna be a good song when it's completely broken in right there i think this saw is a little rich on the low jet or okay look I'm just going to turn it in just a squeak, okay? I could hear it when I fired up there. See how it was kind of loaded up with fuel? Okay, there you guys go. And yes, it's not warmed up. You shouldn't tune when the saw is cold. When you play with them all the time, like I do, I'll do stuff like that. Um, can you guys see it's not as smoky now that it's leaned out a little bit on the low jet and look when I start it up It doesn't it's not low in rpm and then comes back up. Listen Right on we're fixed Just thought I'd jump in at the end. I hope you guys got something out of that video. Uh, you guys know what to do if you don't like the content or you do like it. Thank you to everybody that's been smashing that super thanks button. That really, really helps the channel. Um, that pays for shop supplies, just all the things that go into making videos for you. So I want to thank everybody that's been smashing that super thanks button. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. And I hope you guys got something out of this video. Later.